Your time is just about 645 on the dot and it is time for news to go. We've got a look at today's top stories, our traffic and weather all before you head out the door. Yeah, we start with commitment 2024 news as Georgia's primary election is just minutes away. Polls open there at seven this morning. Make sure to bring your photo ID with you as well. And election officials suggest reviewing a sample ballot before you cast your vote. There are a number of county commissioner, judicial, board of education, state senate and state house seats on the ballot. And those Georgia polling centers close at 7 p.m. A reminder for you, if you're still in line when those close tonight at 7 p.m., you'll be allowed to cast your ballot. WYFF News 4 is your home for commitment 2024 coverage. We'll have the full results tonight on WYFF News 4 at 11, and you can find live results as they come in on WYFF4.com. The prosecution has rested its case in the New York criminal hush money trial of former President Donald Trump. South Carolina Attorney General Alan Wilson and several other Trump allies were in attendance yesterday. In court, the cross-examination of Trump's longtime lawyer, Michael Cohen, continued. Trump has pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records related to alleged hush money payments made to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. A.G. Wilson calling the trial a sham while a crowd was protesting him being there. What we're seeing today is the prosecution of a person because of who he is, not what he, what he is alleged to do. Again, the prosecution has now rested. That means Trump's defense team now has the chance to call witnesses. Closing arguments are set to begin Tuesday of next week. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has condemned the International Criminal Court's decision to seek arrest warrants for him and other Israeli leaders. The ICC plans to charge elected Israeli officials with war crimes and crimes against humanity in connection to the seven-month war between Israel and Hamas. In his statement, Netanyahu called the move outrageous and said that it will, quote, cast an everlasting mark of shame on the international court. U.S. officials, including President Joe Biden and House Speaker Mike Johnson, have both condemned the decision. Three Hamas leaders were also named for arrest warrants. Opening statements are complete and the first witnesses have been called in the trial of a man accused of killing two people at a Greenville County nightclub. Truck S. Cooper is accused of killing two people at Lavish Lounge in July of 2020. Prosecutors say Cooper was part of an entourage for rapper Fujiano, who was set to perform. During the concert, prosecutors say a disagreement happened in front of the stage and Cooper pulled out a gun. The defense says Cooper was defending the rapper and friends after hearing gunshots but didn't shoot anyone. Sergeant Terrence Bowers was the first deputy at the club after the shooting and described what he saw once he went inside. As we moved down, there were people, again, screaming, running. It was smoke everywhere in the club. Um, I, I want to say the music was even still going on. The trial is scheduled to resume at 9 this morning. Later this week, prosecutors say they will call on the club's manager who was shot that day. Officials want to remind people out near the water this Memorial Day weekend to exercise safety precautions. This week is National Safe Boating Week. Marjamia Reed joins us live from Lake Hartwell in Anderson this morning with tips to be safe and responsible on the water. Sydney, the annual Safe Boating Week Pink Campaign is happening this week ahead of Memorial Day weekend. Last summer, South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster signed a new boating safety regulations bill into law. It requires people born after 2007 to take and pass a boater education course before operating a boat with a 10 horsepower engine or greater. Some tips from the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources for the Safe Boating Campaign include inspecting your boat safety equipment, make a float plan, wear a life jacket, Use an engine cut off switch and check the weather. And Safe Boating Week runs until this Friday. Live in Anderson, Jamia Reed, WYFF News 4. Jamia, thank you. And South Carolina DNR is offering free boat inspections this upcoming Memorial Day weekend. Officers will make sure you have the required safety equipment and proper boat and motor registration before you launch. If your paperwork is not in order, you will not get a ticket, but you do have to correct everything before you launch. On Saturday, DNR officers will be at Twin Lakes Landing on Lake Hartwell and at the SC Highway 72 Landing on Lake Greenwood. On Sunday, they'll be at the South Cove Landing on Lake Kiwi. And on Monday, officers will be conducting checks at Seneca Creek on Lake Hartwell. A recall alert to tell you about this morning. More than 187,000 Honda Ridgeline trucks have been recalled due to a rear view camera issue. Certain cold, wintry weather conditions, electric wiring tied to the camera, they might break or 
Fatigue in those conditions that could prevent the driver from getting a proper rearview image. Honda says it has received just over 400 claims relating to the issue as of earlier this month. So far, there are no reports of any related injuries or deaths. The recall is in effect for Honda Ridgeline pickup trucks with model years 2020 through 2024. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's a mild start to the day for most of us. 65 degrees in Greenville, not too far behind Asheville and Hendersonville at 62. Look at that, though. Gaffney and Union, you're kind of the cool spots right now at 59 degrees. As we take a look across the region, mostly dry. We've got a few spotty showers trying to develop across parts of the mountains. We will see a few more of those after lunchtime today. For the upstate, how about partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies? It's going to be hot. Highs getting into the mid 80s for much of the upstate today, a little bit warmer than yesterday. Day. A mix of sun and clouds for the mountains, a little bit cooler for the morning, but look at that. After lunchtime, we'll begin to see a couple stray showers or isolated downpours move into the area, so keep the umbrellas close. Not a washout, not widespread, but a few of those showers for parts of western North Carolina later today. We'll take a look at the rest of the week and the all important holiday weekend forecast, including Memorial Day itself. That's coming up in just a little while. Right now, let's get you outside, get a check on those roads. How's traffic? Prella still flowing smoothly overall in our area on this Tuesday morning. You're looking live at I-85 at Highway 101. Take a look at your screen. There are obviously more cars on the road, but no slowdowns, no, no delays. We're hoping it stays that way, particularly with things like graduations and obviously people going to work or school. If it does change, we'll keep you updated and let you know right here. Travel times look good overall. I-240 to Asheville Highway at 12 minutes. Airport to Woodruff Road is up. It's in the yellow. It's just three minutes, though, right now at nine minutes. We'll keep an eye on that one. And then 385 northbound from Simpsonville to downtown Greenville. 13 minutes. Greenville is looking ahead this morning after the first ever State of the City address. It was postponed from last Monday because of public comment lasting longer than was planned. Last night, City Manager Shannon Laverne delivered her address to City Council. Laverne says the city is strong financially. We're also told it's safer than in the past decade and affordable housing is growing. Laverne spoke with WIFF News 4 last week about her goals with the State of the City address. I think that the state of the city allows us to have a moment to reflect on what, where we are as a community, what we have accomplished, and what we want to make sure that we accomplish in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. She says the city accomplished everything outlined in the first phase of the Greenville 2040 plan, including expanding affordable housing, public transportation, and green spaces. The city of Greenville has unanimously approved its budget for next year. Officials say it will not require a millage increase and it aims to prioritize public safety. Some of those improvements include a new Stone Avenue fire station, an upgraded dispatch system, seven more city police officers, new body cameras, and more. This week at Bon Secours Wellness Arena, several Greenville County schools will be hosting their graduation ceremonies for students. Today there are four ceremonies, Woodmont at 8 a.m. in just over an hour, Southside High at 11.30 a.m., Greenville at 3 p.m., and Blue Ridge High at 6.30 p.m. Please be mindful of the traffic around the well this week. Crowds are to be expected. Ceremonies run through Thursday. We have a full list of those on WIFF4.com. And, of course, congratulations to the class of 2024.